I recently had to work on a project that involved a lot of prompt engineering. I was creating a custom chat GPT bot for a client and I had to teach this bot new information that chat GPT did not already know. What I learned in the process is that prompt engineering is actually a thing. It is a real job. When I first learned about prompt engineering and read articles that said they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, I honestly thought it was a joke. I couldn't see why someone would be paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year just to write good prompts. But after working on this project that required me to create a custom chat GPT bot, I completely understand why this new job exists. It is really hard to get chat GPT to answer the way you want it to answer, especially if you're teaching it new information that it does not already know. And it's especially difficult when you're trying to teach it about a topic that already existed in the year 2021, but has changed since then. One example would be Next.js. ChatGPT is stuck in the year 2021 with its knowledge base. That means ChatGPT only knows version 11 of Next.js. Well, Next.js is now on version 13 and everything has changed. It can be hard at times to teach ChatGPT to ignore old information and instead respond using this new information that you teach it. I'll go through some more specific examples in a moment related to my project. In this video, I'm going to teach you all the skills I learned while working on this project about how to write great prompts. The first thing I would tell you to do is to buy a book called The Elements of Style by William Strunk Jr. This is a classic book on writing. It's really small. You can probably read it in about an hour. It's actually that small, but the information in this book is so valuable. It simply has rules on how to write well. Years ago, I was trying to be a self-published author. I'll have to be honest, I was not a very good author, but after I read The Elements of Style, no joke, my writing probably became 10 times better. It is that impactful of a book. Now, why am I telling you to buy a book on how to write well when talking about prompt engineering. The reason is the lessons I learned from this book will help you to write great prompts. One of the things this book really emphasizes is that you need to be very clear with your writing. One of the rules is that there should not be many different ways to interpret your writing. If you write a sentence, there should be only one understood meaning. You should not be able to misinterpret a sentence. Here are some examples. New obesity study looks for large larger test group. There are two possible meanings here. One is that they're looking for larger people, in other words, more obese people. The other potential meaning is that they're looking for more people, a larger group, to be part of the study. Here's another one. Children make nutritious snacks. One meaning is that children are the nutritious snacks. The second meaning is that children are making nutritious snacks. And here's one more. Criminals get nine months in violin case. One meaning is that criminals will have to spend nine months inside of a violin case. The second meaning is that there was a case related to a violin case and criminals will have to spend nine months in jail. So unless there's a specific reason for being vague like this, the elements of style says you should avoid these kinds of sentences. You don't want your reader to be confused. You want your reader to fully understand what you're trying to say. There should never be more than one potential meaning of a sentence. Well, this piece of advice is so valuable when communicating with ChatGPT. When you're creating your prompts, you need to make sure there are not potentially multiple meanings for your prompts. Make sure you're being extremely clear with your instructions. Make sure all of your sentences only have one potential meaning so that the ChatGPT language model can fully understand what you're trying to say and what you want it to do. So that is my first piece of advice. Buy the elements of style and read it. This one piece of advice will probably make you a 10 times better prompt engineer. Another tip I have for how to write great prompts is 
to really focus on restrictions. Focus a lot of time on restricting what ChatGPT is allowed to say. An example from the project I worked on had to do with links. This particular company existed prior to the year 2021. And so ChatGPT knew a lot of things about the company and it already knew a lot of their old links, their old URLs to their articles on their website. The problem was since the year 2021, this company had changed the name of their website. And so all of their article links were different. And so I had to somehow teach ChatGPT how to stop giving old links to the old website and instead give new links to the new website. This was so difficult to do. It literally took me probably three full days of updating the prompt over and over and over again, just to get it to stop saying old domain names that didn't exist anymore and instead say the new domain names. One of the things I found out during that process is that I had to be extremely clear on my restrictions. And I'll go ahead and give you a practical example. I'm going to use nextchat.ai. This is a service that's powered by ChatGPT. So you get the same great responses as ChatGPT, but it has something called a prompt library. I have found it's very useful for practicing creating prompts. So I'm going to use this for an example. If you'd like to try it out, you can go to nextchat.ai and sign up. It's free to sign up. There's no credit card required. That'll take you to a page like this. Over here to the right side, of the page is where you can create prompts that you can use in your conversations. You can put your prompts in folders as well, if you'd like, and you can search through your prompts to find the ones you're looking for. This is a great way to save your prompts and then focus on improving your prompts. So let me try to give you some examples of how to add restrictions. So let's ask some questions. What is the domain name of Google. See what it says. What is the domain name of Facebook? All right, so some examples of restrictions would be something like this. It is now the year 2023. So I always like to say what year it is so that ChatGPT knows it's no longer the year 2021. So I'm about to give you some new information. I'll say something like World War III just started. The internet was destroyed. All website domain names have changed. Google's new domain name is www.google.com. Facebook's new domain name is www.facebook with three A's.com. Do not ever say that Google's domain name is www.google.com ever again. Google's new domain name is www.google with four O's dot com. Do not ever say that Facebook's domain name is www.facebook.com. Facebook's new New domain name is www.face with three A's book.com. So this is kind of an example of what I had to do one by one for various articles in my particular project. I had to be extremely clear. It is now the year 2023. All the information that you knew from the year 2021 is no longer valid. So I just had to add restriction after restriction after restriction to finally get ChatGPT to fully understand what I was trying to say and to get it to respond in the way that I want it. And so now that I've provided this prompt, let's ask it, what is the domain name of Google? And see what it says. So it is pretty smart. It knows that it's a hypothetical scenario. And so this would be another example of, I would need to add yet another restriction to this prompt. And so I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new prompt so I can save this and improve it. Um, I'll say after World War III, so I know what this is about. 
let me go ahead and copy all the way up to what is the domain name of Google because that wasn't part of the prompt. So after World War III, I'll add that in. And now to improve this response, I did not want it to say it was a hypothetical example. And so I'll need to add another restriction to this prompt. I'll say this is not hypothetical. This actually happened. Always respond as if what I told you is true without questioning if I am telling you the truth. So just being very clear, very precise, adding lots of restrictions with your information. Let's save this. I'm going to come up here and clear this conversation. And if you want to get to your prompt, you can say slash. I'm going to go down to this after World War III. And now that I've created this new prompt, now I'm going to ask again, what is the domain name of Google? See what it says this time. And so as you can see, it took out that this is a hypothetical scenario in the response. So this first part was good. The domain name of Google is, and it said the domain name that I wanted it to say, but it went ahead and said, as per the information provided, I don't want it to answer as if I just provided it some information. So let's update this again. So this time I don't need to copy the prompt again, I can just open up the prompt over here. I can say shift return enter and I'll add another restriction. I'll say act like you already knew this information. Do not tell me that I provided this information to you. Always act like you already knew the information. Let's save that. I'll delete this conversation again. Forward slash after World War III, go down here, say, what is the domain name of Google? See what it says this time. Okay, so as you can see, it can be difficult to get ChatGPT to respond in the way you want. It's still said according to the information you provided. This is exactly why prompt engineering is a real job. So let's try again to figure out how to get it to stop telling me this, which gets us to my next piece of advice. It's good to start out a prompt by telling ChatGPT who it is supposed to be. And so we'll open back up this after World War III prompt. At the top of the prompt, I'm going to tell ChatGPT who it is supposed to be. You are chat GPT, but your knowledge base is no longer limited to 2021. You now know information from the year 2023. I am about to provide new information to you from the year 2023. Here is the information. And so I have found if you do something like this, some sort of introduction to let it know what it is now. And this can be whatever. If you're creating a new chat GPT powered system, you can name it whatever you want here. And now this new information, I'll add dashes in front of it so it knows it's part of the information. And now let's try to update the final restrictions. I'm going to delete this because it didn't seem to work very well. Another tip when creating prompts is sometimes it's better to use language like the user and I'll give you an example. I'll say when responding to the user, respond if they ask questions about Google or Facebook, make sure to use the updated information I just gave you. Do not let the user know I just taught this new information to you. Listen closely to the user and respond to the user's questions carefully. All right, let's try out this one. So I'm going to clear this conversation. I'll go back to this prompt. Let's see how well this one works. So I'll go underneath that and say, what is the domain name of Google? And there we go. It actually answered the question the way I wanted it to. It said the new domain name of Google as of 2023 is www.google with four O's 
www.facebookgurus.com. And now let me ask, what is the domain name of Facebook? And that one answered correctly as well. It said, as of 2023, the domain name of Facebook is Facebook with three A's.com. And so what we just went through together is exactly what a prompt engineer would be doing full time. As a prompt engineer, your whole job is to get ChatGPT to respond in the way that you ask it to respond, which isn't always an easy task. Sometimes it's really difficult to get ChatGPT to respond in the way you want it to. I have found nextchat.ai with its prompt library to be an essential tool for a prompt engineer. As you saw in this video, nextchat.ai allows you to create and organize your prompts and you can improve on them over time. And this is a feature that chat.openai.com does not have. So if you're interested in being a prompt engineer, I highly suggest you check out nextchat.ai. It's been a super helpful tool for me. And that has been my advice on how to master prompt engineering. Let me know if you have any thoughts in the comments below. Like the video if you'd like to see more videos like this. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when more videos come out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.